Question number seven is another uh, extended writing question regarding a practical. This one is a practical to find the Planck constant using light emitting diodes. This is one of the practicals you should be familiar with from the PAGs. So each of these LEDs emits monochromatic light. The wavelength of the emitted photons is determined during the manufacturing process and is provided so we know the wavelength of each of these. When the potential difference uh, across the LED reaches a specific minimum value V min, the LED suddenly switches on emitting photons of light of wavelength lambda. Uh, we know that this minimum voltage and the wavelength are related by the energy equation EV min equals HC divided by lambda where H is the Planck constant and C uh, is the speed of light in a vacuum. So our question here is to discuss how you could use the circuit from figure 7.1 to determine accurate values for V min and how data from the table can be used to graphically determine the value for the Planck constant. So you need to right away divide your answer into two parts. First of all, discussing how you can use the circuit. So how are you going to carry out the practical? And then how are you going to analyze that data in order to determine a value for the Planck constant, analyze it graphically? Now, it's probably easiest at this point if we look at the mark scheme and see the steps that the mark scheme describes. And you can also have a look at uh, exactly how the marks are awarded in this kind of extended writing question. So here we have the mark scheme and you'll see that uh, similar to a GCSE style question, we have level three, level two, level one and zero mark answers. And uh, depending on how many of the points from the guidance side of the mark scheme you get dictates which level your answer falls in. So in order to carry out the experiment, first of all, you need to set the potential divider to such a point that the voltage is very, very low or even zero. And then you connect your flying leads to one of the LEDs. You then gradually increase the voltage on the LED. You do this by adjusting the potential divider, increase the voltage until the LED just lights. How this is done uh, is usually by sticking a, an opaque tube, a dark tube around the LED and you look down the tube and you can then judge the moment where the light just switches on. You then need to repeat this several times and find an average uh, V min for each of the LEDs. Now you don't need to have got all of those points to get a, a maximum level three answer for this part of the experiment, uh, but you do need most of them. In terms of the second part of our answer, processing the results, we can use our equation here EV equals HC divided by lambda. If we're looking for the relationship between V min and lambda, you'll see here that the minimum voltage V min is proportional to one over the wavelength lambda. So you can plot a graph of these two quantities. So the first thing you need to do of course, is to calculate what one over lambda is. So you'd need to add that to your results table. And if you plotted V min on the Y axis, you'll see why in a moment, and one over lambda on the X axis, this should produce a straight line relationship. Now to then work out the Planck constant, we need to use the equation of a straight line. So let's first of all, rearrange this equation to get a V min on its own, because the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c, which means that we can't have anything with our y value, which is v min. So we need to rearrange our equation to get v min on its own. So that gives us v min is equal to h c divided by e. And I'm just going to pull to one side as well the 1 over lambda. Now what we can do is group together these quantities. We know that on our y-axis, we've, we've plotted V min, so this looks good. We know that on our x-axis, we've plotted one over lambda. We have no plus term here in our equation, which means there is no y-intercept, which leaves us that the gradient of the line M is equal to HC over E. So gradient, equals HC divided by E. So therefore, H equals the gradient 
multiplied by e divided by the speed of light c and that will give us our Planck constant so if we re return back to the mark scheme you'll see that that's what it says so we plot a graph of v min against one over lambda that will be a straight line through the origin so we can calculate the values of one over a lambda in our results table draw a line of best fit and the gradient is going to allow us to calculate h as e multiplied by the gradient divided by c now again you need at least a few of these points uh, in order to, to score the maximum marks. So to get a level three answer, you'd need to say at least three of these points, uh, and they've specified which ones, and at least three of these ones, points one, two, uh, and five. So drawing the graph uh, with producing a straight line through the origin, uh, which would then allow you to use the gradient. For, for three to four marks, it's slightly more flexible, two points, uh, from one and three from the other it doesn't matter which ones and part b is a question about the photoelectric effect we've got a beam of ultraviolet light incident on a clean metal surface uh, the graph shows us how the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons ejected from the surface varies with the frequency of the incident light so we should explain how this graph cannot be explained in terms of the wave model for electromagnetic waves so the wave model can't explain the sudden cutoff at f equals 7 times 10 to the 14. It also cannot explain why frequency is proportional to k. So if you think about it, the wave model it should be the intensity of the light, the, the amount of waves striking the metal that dictates the kinetic energy, not the frequency of those waves. Whereas the photon model tells us that frequency is related to energy of a photon. And so that can be used to explain why a higher frequency, a higher energy photon will allow electrons to be ejected from the surface. Part II asks us to use data from figure 7.2 from this graph to find a value of the Planck constant. Well, we know that E equals HF. So we can rearrange that to get H equals E divided by F. So we can use the gradient in this line. We can find the change in kinetic energy divided by the change in frequency. So if we were to draw a big triangle like that, we could find that h equals 60 minus 0 times 10 to the minus 20. Divided by 18 minus 8.5. times 10 to the power of positive 14. And if you equate that, it comes out as 6.32 times 10 to the minus 34, which if you compare to the known value of the Planck constant is very similar. And for part two, to work out the threshold frequency of the metal, well, the threshold frequency is that frequency here at which uh, the electrons just begin to be released so we can we don't need to do any calculations here we know that the threshold frequency is 8.5 times 10 to the power of 14 and finally to work out the work function of the metal we know that the work function phi is equal to h times the threshold frequency where the plan constant that we determined was 6.32 times 10 to the power of minus 34. Multiply that by the threshold frequency, which we've just determined to be 8.5 times 10 to the power of 14, which gives us a work function of 5.37 
times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe and visit cowanphysics.com.